you le- you left you left then on a uh, you had I think obviously the contract was terminated I think at the end of that season you then moved to Charlton have a loan spell at Wickham in that time as well um, moved back down to League One was that just a, this, you know you've had offers from the Championship during the course of that previous season was a Championship move not on not on the horizon during that summer. No, not a chance. I like I say, I, I'd, I'd a free, I signed a free year down at Preston, and after a year, obviously end of season, they said, "Look, you need to leave." Yeah. I said, "Well, I can't leave. I'm under contract." I said, "Unless you under contract, you pay me up, or another club pays me my my contract, or or you sell me. I can't just leave." Yeah. So, um, so obviously we, we sorted out. Cholton obviously were interested in me, and I think they they just took over my contract. So that was fine. Oh. So it was like say. So, Obviously, no, like, say, no transfer fee, no nothing. Obviously, went there, and um, yeah. So, like, listen, on a serious note, like, I say, I had, I didn't really play too much football. I was on loan to Barnsley. I come back. Also, like, I say, it didn't work out for Barnsley. I say, I, I got my house burgled as well. So, I had burglars come into my house. My kids got bullied at school. We had no friends or family around us. So, when I said to you, like previously, like everything went wrong that season. Yeah. That's to add on top of all the things that went wrong. Do you know what I mean? Different managers didn't play out on loan. Got burgled. Kids, kids obviously bullied at school. Me and my missus were, me and my ex-wife were at each other's throats. It was just, it was recipe for disaster. We had no friends or family around us. We was on our own, isolated. It was hard. So, wanted to get out there as soon as possible so I can obviously get back to being happy. So, didn't even listen. No chance side wanted me because I, I think I, got, I scored four goals that season. So, yeah. I, you know, out of twenty games, I only scored four goals. It wasn't good enough, and no one wanted me. No. So, Charlton come in at League One. I was going down to League One anyway with Preston. If I stayed there, and Charlton's arguably the same sort of size what Preston is. I know they've probably got more history, Preston sort of thing, but for fan, well, Charlton get more fans than they um, than obviously uh, Preston do, obviously yeah. when they're in the league one sort of thing. So I thought it's like for like, <clears throat> it's back at home, I can move back to Essex where my family is, I'm like friends. Uh, my first opportunity now since I could have gone back to South End. So um, it was it was a thing that I just wanted to do and get it wrapped up and signed, to sign a three-year deal. And I, I was over the moon to play for, for Charlton because it's, it was, it's a massive club and to be back down south and a, uh, and when it walked obviously through the door, Chris Powell was a manager as well. Lovely guy, got along with him really well. And the players, and the, and and do you know what? Like Scunthorpe was probably the, the you know, arguably one of the best groups, but Charlton is very very close to my heart about the players as well. They're just the, the team apparently brought in eighteen new players, which is unheard of. So he brought in eighteen new players in pre season. None yeah. of us knew each other, but how how Pally done it really well is. Because obviously he had a bad, he was only Charlton manager six months previously in League One, and he didn't really know too many players and, and the ground and stuff like that. But what he did is every team he played against, he went and basically got the best player from that team. So he got, uh, for example, Danny Green from Dagenham Redbridge, uh, Danny Hollands and Royce Wiggins from uh, from Bournemouth, Dal Stevens who's at Brighton now, got him from Oldham. Yeah. He obviously brought me in, obviously from Preston for experience. He brought in Leon Cole. Um, he kept Bradley Wright. He kept on obviously Johnny, uh, Johnny Will, um, uh, Johnny Jackson, and he just we just we just got the squad going, and he just added as we went along and brought in Jason Yule back to the club, and we just we just again, and he brought Ben Hamer in as well, um, and he just we just went from strength to strength each game. We just knew we, I would say about Barnsley where it was just a winning mentality. We just we just knew wherever we were going to play, we were going to be, and yeah. um, started the season done really done well, scored goals. Young Camagan come in. He done that little. He done better than what I did, and he played that to take a back seat. Um, towards the end of the season, I wasn't really playing, so I went out and with him and done really well. Come yeah. back, yeah. bit part player, and then we managed to get promoted and got 101 points, which is we're the only we're one of three teams to ever get over 100 points in the uh, in the football league. I know obviously uh, Man City done it the other year, sort of thing. So in all, we're the, we're the fourth team to to ever do it. Yeah, wow, incredible stuff. And then. Um... Obviously, then it, you were made available for transfer mm. by Chris Powell, and you moved to you moved to Brentford. Was that again the kind yeah. of option? That, you know, close to home. Was that a big, big, big factor? No. Being able to stay in that area. No, do you know what? It was so far to get to. Even though it's southern, it's uh, it's it's West London, and I'm Essex. So Charlton to me was about a forty minutes to an hour minute drive. Right. So it weren't too bad. Brentford was the other side. So I've got to go right around the M25 and then back in, in the yeah. M4 where Heathrow is. It was a nightmare. It took me three hours one time to get to. Oh, and, uh, and I think it's only about 70 miles or whatever it was. It took me three hours. It was a nightmare. But the thing is, obviously, uh, Charlton went up. So got promoted, 
got to August and proudly just said to me, look, you, did, you know, you're not, you're not in my plans. Like, we've gone up, we're going to extreme. And I said, look, I totally understand. It's not a problem. He said, but Brentford's coming for you. I think it's a good option for you to go to. Go and speak to the manager, see what you think. So I spoke to Uwe Rosler, had a meeting with him. Come across so well. So organised, so well. Uh, he, he structured. He just, he just obviously, our Germans are just so, so football oriented. just knew so much. They really impressed me. So I thought, he's, he, you know, he might take me to that next level as a player. So, and I thought it's a league one side. They obviously, you know, they're taking over my contract at Charlton. So I'm not obviously really losing out on money. Um, so, you know, it's, I need to go and play football. So I went in there and, and I'll be honest with you, after about three days, I knew I made a mistake. Really? I just, I just, right. Yeah, I just, I, just, I just signed a three-year deal. And after three days, four days, I knew I made a mistake. Wow. So um, it was it was it was hard. Like it wasn't anything to do with with the fans. It wasn't anything to do with the players. I just it's the only club I've ever set foot in. I thought I think I've made a mistake here. That's I think yeah. I think I did, and it was uh, it was hard. Like you say, I think U- Uwe Rosa for <clears throat> for how good he's done and stuff like that. Me and him really didn't see eye to eye. He yeah. wanted things out of me that I can give him, and I wanted things out of him that he can give me, and it was, we, we never really hit it off and it was hard. And it was, he, he, probably, he wasn't really a factor why I'd done wrong, but he was one of them. And yeah. I obviously blame myself for the things that I didn't do right. But he just wanted, like I say, he physically wanted me to do things that I physically couldn't, couldn't do. Like he wanted me to run behind, he wanted me to curve my run, then he wanted me to be this and that and the other. And it just, he was trying to change my game at 28. Yeah. And you can change your game to a certain degree you couldn't, I couldn't make myself any quicker. I couldn't make myself more sharper. Like what I was, I was what I was. And it was, it was kind of hard. He wanted us in at sort of nine o'clock in the morning. And obviously traveling at six, obviously I had to leave at half six every morning in my car. Or I was getting a train, which was taking two hours. I was getting a train every day across, which is obviously, I don't know if you know, but anyone in rush hour, getting a train in London is, is a nightmare. So I'm there with my wash bag and, do you know what I mean, going around the other side to London to get mm-hmm. out to... Do you know what I mean? And it's quite, it's quite tiring, it's exhausting sort of thing to, to go and train and that sort of thing. Then we obviously will we'll have sometimes double sessions where we we'll train, then we'll have meetings, then we'll look at the laptops, then we'll leave in sort of three, half past three. Then obviously it's rush hour to get back home again. It's like half past five, six. And it was, and it was hardly having days off. And it was, just, I was, it was just hard getting used to that. And I just thought, do you know what I mean? I'm not really playing. It's, 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 not, it's, not, like it's, like, it's not like it's on my doorstep. It's hard. Uwe Ross is pushing us ridiculously and and it was like it was very structured like we had to wear shin pads in training we had to if one person took their jumper off we all had to take our jumper off do you right. know what I mean? it was just very regimented like army structured do you know right. what i mean it was just it was just 24 7 100 football yeah. and he he was saying things like i don't understand why everyone don't live near the training ground everyone should live near the training ground and what we're saying is is we can't live in west london gaffer like we can't afford to uproot live our fam- move our family and we can't afford a house over here it's too expensive uh, yeah and also if you get rid of us after six months then what do we do yeah and he was like no nah, no nah. he was he kept rebelling that oh man city this man city that man city this and we're like but he was in the premiership it's a bit different do you know what i mean it's just yeah. it's like i say we just we didn't see eye to eye we didn't see this and he's just saying that you're not doing this you're not doing that and like i say i didn't really play much and like i say i just I, I just I didn't I didn't I didn't feel it really and like you say I, I struggled to get confidence I struggled to play well my mind wasn't really in it I was traveling all the time like it was just I wasn't really seeing the kids as much because obviously I couldn't see them at school or after school or it was just it was just hard I wasn't really playing I was up and down the country it's just like I say it just it didn't work so like you say I'm surprised it lasted 18 months but yeah um, and also as well as like you say me and, me and Uwe Rosen fell out again over like he wasn't playing me but it, again come down to a reserve game I was I would be as bad as what I was in one game, if not worse than what I was against for for uh, Bill Brown in the Preston one. Yeah, and um, <laughs> but I, I, I was bad. But the thing is about that one is obviously he made me play in a training game against some sort. Of, I think it was Bristol City, and it was windy. It was horrible. I was the only again. I was the only pro playing with kids, and yeah. um, and it was awful. And my head was gone completely because he, he he completely banished me. But I managed to score two goals and one three two. I don't know how I scored the two goals, by the way. <laughs> and um, and, I, and I stayed over at Sam Saunders' house at the time because we was in training the next day and he phoned me and he said, like, you, you were embarrassing for me. That's the worst I've ever seen. I said, but I scored two goals, Gaffer. That's all you want from a strike. You want to score two goals. So we had a big row sort of thing. And then he didn't, he didn't put me... He, 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 called, he, said, he said to me, you're poison. You're cancer in the change rooms you are. 
He yeah. said, you, you're, you, you're going around everyone, you're slagging everyone off. I said, no, I'm not gaffer. That's one thing I don't do. I don't slag people off. I said, if, if I've got a problem, I'll tell you. I said, but I'll never, ever slag players or, or people off to their things. I said, yeah. I, I'm, I'm focused on myself. So we had it out. So when, anyway, for, for the next three months, I was training on my own. I wasn't allowed in, I wasn't allowed in the training ground unless the boys either left or they wasn't there. Wow. That's so, horrible. It was, it was really, that was, like I say, all, all the things I experienced, sort of thing, that's why I can relate to some players because, like I say, I was traveling two hours. So he said to me, you can either get in at half past seven in the morning and you train for an hour before the pros, before everyone else comes in, or you'll train at three o'clock in the afternoon when everyone leaves. Your call, your choice. So I was like, well, I'm not, I'm not going to get up at four in the morning to come here. So I chose three o'clock. Yeah. So at least I've got to see, obviously, my kids and stuff like that. So then I'll have to get the train across or drive across, train on my own with the assistant manager. For, for 45 minutes or so and then get in my car drive home again every day Imagine. so I've done that for three I had to do that for three months I phoned the PFA got them all involved and there was like you know at least if it's allowing you to train at least you've got something um, and they just they just went in them shell they didn't really protect me and I was really disappointed they said you know you've got to train with at least eight people in a thing so I'm investigating I'm saying look I'm going to take the, you know I'm going to take this further gaffer if you don't let me train and stuff like that yeah. and it, in, the, in the end he made me train sometimes with the 23s um, and then obviously a little bit with them and then um, never let me play any matches unless it was like a like a friendly reserve game against like a school side a college time whatever it was and then it got to a point and then obviously Plymouth come on loan for me and I, mentally and physically, I wasn't ready to go at all. But I needed to get out of the place. Yeah. And I was really, really unfit. Obviously, my mind was all over the place, like scrambled. I went down there and um, lovely people really looked after me. But I, again, I was awful because physically, I just wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to play football. But yeah. I needed to get out there. And I come back and that's when Brentford said like, well, Mark Warburton was the sports director then, who was very slippery as well. He, uh, he said to me like... Um, you know, he's, he's probably best, you know, we, we settle this now. And I said, yeah, I said, Look, I've been wanting you to, to get rid of me for ages, but you've made me go through this. And if I don't turn up, you know, you're going to find me. So I have to turn up. Yeah. Uh, so then we sorted out my contract and they, they sort they sorted me out. And then obviously that was, I was a free transfer then in mm -hmm. December. And then you moved to Scunthorpe for the third time. Yes. Again, they, uh, again, Russell Wilcox, who was assistant manager way back then, he was the new manager now. And he, uh, he said, I was just seeing you left Brentford, everything okay sort of thing. I said, yeah. He said, look, if you want to come in a bit of training, I said, Russ, I live down south, mate. Why would I come up to Scumpel for training? He <laughs> yeah. said, well, yeah. He said, uh, he said, what are you going to do with yourself? I said, look, I, I don't know, mate. I said, I've, my head's all over the place. He went, well, look, we've got a behind closed door game. Why don't you come up, you know, see, if you, see what you think, and um, I'll see what I think, and then we'll, we'll talk afterwards. So I thought, okay, my last chance to maybe go back to Stanford, let's give this a go. So I went up there and I, I sort of trained with them and played with them and stuff. And Russ went, let's make this work. Let's make this happen. So they gave me a six-month contract and obviously involved playing. <coughs> got, obviously got promoted and just didn't see out my season. So it, like I say, the season started terribly at Brentford and like I say, training on my own and just physically many well pace. And, and to be fair, I lost a lot of weight as well. Because yeah. I wasn't... Because I wasn't eating well, because I was stressed, and because I felt really shitty about myself, I think I lost about a stone and a half. Yeah. So I went up to Scunthorpe and I looked at my photos like recently, and I thought, "You look ill, Paul. Look really skinny, really ill, sort of thing." But you know, what I mean, I still got myself played well and, and managed to get promoted at the end of the season, which was good. Yeah. And then um, you go, you you make the move to to Wickham at the end of that season. Was there any conversation with Scunthorpe to say? Let's keep you on in League One, or did you just did you think that you'd kind of done your time there, or what? Again, what kind of happened there briefly? Do you know what it was a catch two situation because we um, so I knew Gareth Ainsworth because I was on loan to Wickham last time uh, a couple of years before that when he was player coach, and we played Wickham <coughs> second or third game last of the season, and they needed a point to basically stay up, and and we need a point to get up sort of thing. So we both got a point sort of thing. I spoke to Gaz, and he said, "Look." What's happening with me? I said, look, I have no idea. I said, look, honestly, I don't think I'll get a contract here next season. But if I don't, he said, what do you reckon about with you? And he went, Hazy, I'll have you tomorrow. He said, see how you go. If you get released, give me a call. And I said, okay, Jazz. So then um, when it's gone for, obviously, see the season out. And then Russ phoned me and was like, uh, Paul, obviously, I don't want you to come into I don't, I don't say to you to drive in. He said, look, obviously, I, I would like to keep you. He said, but... I think there's people above me that feel that going up to League One, they can probably get better for their money. And, you know, I mean, you're traveling. You know, I know you're living up here at the moment, but your family's based down south. 
can you live up here for a year away from your family and stuff like that? That's what they're worried about. And I said, listen, Russ, I'm disappointed because <clears throat> I thought I've done well for you. Mm. Got promoted. I know, I know I'm, only, I'm only 31 at the time, I think I was. I went, I could play in League One, mate. It's not a problem. I was there six months ago with Brentford, so it's not a problem. I know I didn't play much, but I was there. So, and I went, That's the first time I dropped back to League Two since I left Gunford when I first went to, uh, when I got promoted. So it's been, it would have been 10 years since I've been in League Two. So I said, of course I can be in League One. That's where I've been there at the Championship. So it's not a problem. I said, but to me, I, I, I could smell a rat, mate. I said, new chairman, because it's, it's, a new chairman was in there. Right. Uh, right. Mr. Swan sort of thing and we're fine now but at the time I, I felt like he he didn't really want me back because it was like a case of if I come back I might take the limelight away from him a little bit right? Yeah. and um, and the new chairman coming in he wanted new players as himself sort of thing so um, it was just one of the situations that like he said that I said listen Russ I know it probably isn't you I'm a bit disappointed but look it is what it is it's fine um, so I packed my stuff up so got really there, I phoned Gaz and said, Gaz, Gaz went right. Listen to me. He said, Look, this, we are scrapped for cash. Like we are, we're basically on attentive care at the moment. This club, like we, we've got no money at all, and we don't know how long we can stay afloat. But I want to sign you. He said, Come into my office tomorrow, and we'll have a good chat. See what we can do. So I went in there. I had a good chat with him and the director and stuff like that. And he said, Like this is obviously what we can do. He said, It's a two-year contract. And but he, he obviously said like it's it's a complete project. He said like we are on our we are on our faces. And he said I need people like you to come in and help me in the, through this situation. And I went, Gaz, that's all I need to hear from you. I said yeah. you want me. I want to play for you. I want to come back to Wickham Club at zero on loan. Let's do this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I signed my, I signed myself a two year deal. Gaz obviously in pre season made me captain as well, which was the first time in my career to be um, a manager's name. Made, made I've been obviously previously captain for it for a game or so. Someone's injured or you know vice 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 sort of captain sort yeah. of thing, but. Yeah. Never actual the, the the club actual captain, so he made me captain. I just felt that's when I felt so important, responsible, and I just I just took it on my shoulders and I just excelled and I just I took myself to another level in it, as football. Do you know what I mean? The confidence I was losing, I felt a good player, I felt important, I felt wanted, and it was um and I felt I needed to be responsible to the younger players and and to my squad and to the fans, everything like that. And it was it was it was such a it was one of my proudest moments as as a footballer. Yeah, and you. How how do you kind of summarise your 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 time at Wickham? Did you actually be made captain? Was it how happy were you there? Was it was it a good time? Yeah, yeah, extremely good time. Like arguably as, as my time at, at Scunthorpe, obviously I was Scunthorpe for six years, and I was only at Wickham for four or just three and a half sort of thing. So the time scale was obviously different. But Wickham, like I say, I was captain first season. Like, so the new chairman, the chairman at the time, obviously come in um, and he said, we have a five-year uh, plan here. First year, could we just manage that? Is to stay up. 52 points, get to 52 points. If we can have a little cut run to get a little bit of money in the club, that's good, but we need to stay in this league. Uh, so second season, then obviously we can maybe get just below mid-table, so there's an improvement with a cut run. Third season is to be above mid-table with a cut run. Fourth one is to get into the playoffs, so we get a bit of money in the cut run. Fifth one is to, to get promoted. So he right. said, like, you know, that, that's our project. He said, I'm doing this because he's a businessman. He said, look, we're doing this for like a business project over a five-year project. And I related back to thinking, again, short-term, medium, long-term goals. Yep. Our long-term goal is five years to be in League One. At the moment, it's all about staying up, a short-term goal. So I was like, right, okay, we'll do this. And yep. obviously, Gaz, Gaz obviously changed so much of what he did the year before because I wasn't there, but everyone called him Gaz. So he changed that and said, everyone's going to call me Gaffer. He also got rid of a lot of players, brought new players in. And just started again, sort of thing, and um, and we started unbelievable. We were so, like to say we was in the top three all season, all the way through. And the one time we dropped out was the last game of the season because we managed to get a draw and we got into the playoffs and got to the final, and we lost on penalties to Southend. And yeah. that first season, like I say, we were supposed to get fifty-two points <coughs> to stay up. We managed to get the club record at that time at seven, sorry, eighty-three points. We got, Mate, yeah. So. We got we got eighty three points. I think we only lost six games that season. I think it was, and um, and we lost out on goal difference to go up. Ouch! And so, like I said, we was in, in the top three throughout, yeah. uh, right away from the first game of the season right to the second last game of the season. The top three thinking right, and then we lost the last game of the season to the playoffs. And like I say, we lost to Southend on, and Southend scored in extra time in the nineties or would it be hundred and twenty first minute. Oh. It, to to equalise the last kick of the game, we went to penalties and we lost. Oh. And um, 
So then we had the second season and then, as I say, we were like mid-table, but managed to do that. But um, like I say, I think it, I'll, then I started to get injuries and I was struggling to, to um, stay fit. I was always breaking down. And like I say, apart from the first eight months of the season, when I was, I was there three and a half years, apart from the first eight months, every game and every training session, I was playing injured. Yeah. I was either having, I was having injections, I had to miss training, I just had to have um, um, painkillers, tablets, or I had to have something because I, my, my, my legs and stuff, I was just getting injuries, I was playing for injuries all the time for him and I couldn't really replicate what I did the first season. So the second and third season, I was playing, I was captain, but I wasn't the same player as what I was and I was struggling a little bit and it got to a point where Gaz, Gaz the, the last year of my contract, Gaz said to me, look, you're not playing much. I'm going to take the captaincy off you because I need my captain to be out in the field. He yeah. said, but it's been a harder thing for me. And it was quite hard. To be fair, he had a bit of, it was quite emotional as well. So he was a little bit emotional in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in his room as well, saying like, you know, this, this is so hard for me to say this because I love you more than anything. He said, but I need to do what's right for the team. I said, Gaz, like, you don't need to explain yourself. Like, it's hard to take, but I can see in yourself, this is hard for you. So you don't need to make yourself any worse. So, um, Obviously, went away. I didn't really play much. And then it got to all end of August, and I thought, I can sit here and obviously not play at all, wait till Christmas, or you try and get, or I can try and get out. And Gav called me and said, look, AZ, like, it might be best you leave. So at least you can play football. Yeah. And I said, yeah, that's fine. So he sorted out my contract. <laughs> and then um, I left there and obviously waited around. Then, um, and then I went to Newport. You then drop into non-league football for the first time. Um, yeah. Obviously, I'm from Suffolk. My, you know, this is my neck of the woods. Um, Suffolk, Suffolk if you're a Norwich fan. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's um, my dad. My dad's from Norwich, born and raised in Suffolk. I did get okay, but um, yeah, Sudbury. Talk me through yeah. that. A lot of my listeners are non-league. They are, you know, they do have, you know, some of them do have an association with Sudbury. Where did that move come from? How did that come about? Um, why Sudbury? And talk me through your time in non-league and how you found it, what the experience was like. Yeah. So, yeah. So, obviously, how that really come about was, obviously, I, when I left Wickham, I, I, um, I went for a separation with my ex-wife at the time. And um, so, living, literally, just, split, just obviously split up. It was a quite a bad separation. <coughs> um, and then Newport come in for me. And I just needed to get away from the, from the, the area in place. So, I was traveling back and forth in Newport. And then, obviously, when I, when I obviously end the season, obviously, Flinney said to me, I want to offer you a deal, but I need you to move across, the, uh, move obviously closer because you can do it for six months, but I need you here for a year. Yeah. And I said, Flinney, I said, look, I, I can't. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going through a divorce. Like, the kid, my two boys live with me, so it's going to be hard for me to move them across for a year because if, if you get sacked or I don't play or, or you leave me in the year, I've got to move my kids again. Like, the, the school, they've already moved around the country. I said, I can't do that. I said, how much I want, I can't. So then Matt Taylor was the Exeter manager. Just literally got the job. And he phoned me and said, hey, I've just got the job. I want you to come in as like a, as a first team coach, but maybe like a player so I can bounce things off you and you can play as well. Yeah. And I went to yeah. He said, like, it's a year still. I said, I can't because the same said to Newport. I can't, I can't move my kids across. Because if you get sacked, yeah. where am I going to go after three months with my kids? I said, I, I can't do that. Yeah. And then Carlo or Morgan come in for me and that's up north. And I said, I said, I, I, can't, I can't move. It's amazing. I said, I, I have to stay here. So I made a decision. I thought, do you know what? I can't probably play first team football, like pro football, because South End do a League One down the road. They're going to offer me a contract. Colchester don't want me. So wherever I go, it's gonna, I'm going to have to like, move like, or have to, uh, like, um, you know, travel sort of thing. And it's going to yeah. be too hard for me with my kids going to school and being around them because they're suffering as well, the separation. So I was like, do you know what, Paul? You just have to retire. Like, just give up football and just see what happens. Mm-hmm. So, because I was, I was still getting my wages through July at Newport, I was in no rush. And then yep. it got to the end of July, so I was just chilling a little bit. Because I knew, I knew as well, it's like two months later, I was getting some of my pension money as well, because I was turning 35. So okay. I thought, like, you know, if worse comes worse, at least I can live off my pension for a while before I decide what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do. Like, mm-hmm. freaking a year ago or eight months ago, I thought I was going to leave my wife and we're going to be wherever. Now I'm not with her. Like, it's a complete change of, of things. So, yeah. I, um, I, I sort of wait, and then, then I get a message on LinkedIn. So I look at it, and it's obviously Mark Morsey, the, the, the uh, AFC Sudbury manager. Yep. He was like, hi, hi Paul, how you doing? Um, I've, I've got your, um, obviously, your name off uh, Steve Foley. Um, yep. Obviously, he was, yep. he, was, he, was the first team, he was the first team coach back at Norwich back in when, obviously, when I was in. I got along with Steve yep. really well. I quite liked, he, was, he was probably the only straight-up guy that was with me, even though 
he batted me a lot of the time, but he was quite straight up. And he, I know he went to Ipswich, didn't he, as a coach? So yeah. Mark, Mark knew him at New, Newer Market, I think it was. Which I, look, the break again, when he said Sudbury, I was like, I don't, Mark, I said, I don't mean to be disrespectful. Or anything. I said, I know nothing about non league football because I've never needed to. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know about yeah, my local clubs, maybe like, you know, like a Canvey Island or a Concord Range, but that's right on my doorstep. But anyone in Suffolk or anyone outside Essex, I, I wouldn't know. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, you know, Sudbury said, like, you know, that coming in, I said, like, Mark, I said, I'll be honest with you. I've not even thought about going into non-league football. Like, I just don't know where I'm at. I said, like, and I explained the situation about my, splitting my ex-wife and, and that sort of thing. I said, look, I've just come out of the pro game. He said, look, I wouldn't message you if I don't think it's worth your time. He said, I'm not like that. He said, but if you come down to the place, you can see for yourself how nice the club is. And yeah. obviously, going for you to, he said, but your experiences, I've, I've been needing an experienced number nine striker who will score goals, who will look after my team, stuff like that. And he said, obviously, financially, like he's, Say we we're not messing around as in like you're not going to pay your pro wage, but it's not going to be like a case of like you know you, we're taking the piss out of you. So away, obviously, we, yeah, we 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 crushed <laughs> our sort of thing, and I and I said like sort it out, and I thought you know what he's 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 got balls to just message someone like that yeah. who he doesn't know, yeah, and to speak. Like that. And I thought you know what if he's come out of his way to say this, and he's got this sort of thing that he says about it <clears throat> about the club and that sort of thing, I thought do you know what. I don't like Suffolk because I'm Norwich and Norfolk through and through. But if Suffolk's a little bit like Norfolk people, they're nice people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Down to earth, quite, you know, you know, oldish people, you know, like humble people, that sort of thing. I thought, you know what, it won't be the, it won't be the worst place to probably play. I've don't never seen, I've, I've obviously looked on the internet on Google, looked at the stadium, I thought, do you know what, it, it looks quite tidy over there. It's like, sort of like Tilbury or some other crappy little stadium. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I said, okay, Mark. Let's do it. He said, look, it's a two-year deal. Let's do it. So, um, all right, signed it. So, I signed it. And that's, what, that's how it come about. Obviously, he messaged me on LinkedIn. Amazing. You wouldn't, I, I, I've always wondered how managers at this level approach someone, how they even find a contact on there. But some, via LinkedIn, that's like that's bizarre. But, yeah. yeah. It really is. But they're saying that um, uh, Flynn, uh, Michael Flynn at Newport, he messaged me on LinkedIn. Out of all the things he could probably get me on, <coughs> whether it was Instagram or Twitter or, or even phone up freaking Gaz and say, look, can I have Hayes' number to phone you? He messaged me yeah. on LinkedIn. And he went, he went, he went, oh, he went, <laughs> he went, um, I've seen you left Wickham. Um, fancy coming over here? <laughs> and I was, and I was, he said something like that. I, I, I've got it on my message. I, sh- I, could, I could show you, do you know what I mean? And I was like, I was like, I said, what do you mean, uh, Flinny? And he was like, he was like, get your ass over here. We we want to sign you. And I was, and obviously Flinny's a character. He's got like he's got like um, yeah. You know, he's, he's just all over the place. Do you know what I mean? Really funny guy. And um, and he just he just said that. And I said, uh, all right. And he said, listen. He said, send me your number. I'm going to call you. So I was sending his number, and he called me. He said, look, I ain't messing around. And it's and the same, like you say. So it wasn't the first time they've messaged me on LinkedIn, but nowadays, like you say, you can get hold of people. Any way, shape, or form, you. I, I worry about how people, old people, you know, years ago, because there wasn't the internet. So how would you do it? But now you can go through Instagram, you can go through TikTok, you can go through um, Twitter, or phoning through people or LinkedIn, can't you? There's always ways. That's, getting, that's, right. it. that's it. You always go through people. So yeah, no, no. Mark done it that way, which was quite different. But like I say, I experienced it with Flinny, so it wasn't too bad. So how did you find your time? at Sudbury and um, what was it kind of like at non-league during the course of that season did you have you you know have you enjoyed it or has it just been something where I'm just playing football I don't care where I'm playing at this you know at this particular point yeah do you know what so because obviously never experienced it so um, went in there um, lads were brilliant like obviously you get obviously I spoke to um, Gary Alexander because my, my youngest is at Cholton um, he's under he's under 11 now. he's got a contract for next year but uh, Gary, Gary Alexander's boys over there. Um, Danny Kedwell, he's, his boys over there. We're in the, we're, both our boys in the same team, actually. And obviously, Keds has got played in non-league as well with Chatham and, and other things like that. But um, I spoke to both of them. And, and Gaz is a manager of Glee over the other side of the road. Um, yeah. and, he, and he said, oh, Hayes, he said, he said, go in non-league football, mate. He said, you will see some characters. Yeah. He said, you, will, he said, you will, wouldn't meet so many big-time trialers in all your life. He said, people are having themselves. They think they're better than what they are. They start trying to talk about money. He said, mate, you will have people on toast. And that's yeah. what. So he already put a perspective in my head what, what people are like, because obviously I haven't met too many non-league players. I've met non-league players when they come into the game, and they're very humble and grounded, and they're, they're excited. But the other way around, I've not been around too many. Yeah, so yeah. I would be sure. So obviously I went in Sudbury. And um, so I, I went in there as in like, 
I don't know anyone. I've, I've not heard of any of the players. Yeah. Uh, nice stadium. They were, and, but the lads were top quality. Lovely, lovely boys. I've never met such... A, and to be fair, I still keep in contact with a lot of them. And um, <clears throat> so, obviously, really nice one. I think we... I think our first game, I think, obviously, I was on the bench, which was fine. I think he threw me at half-time. But, obviously, I got a little strain in my calf straight away. So, I played a little bit injured the first couple of games. But I think, for, obviously, from... I think I started in August. So, August till November, I was terrible. Like, really? awful. Really, right. So, really bad. So, I had to phone up the manager, Mark, Mark Morsey. Um, this was on, like, a, a Monday. And I've been toying over this for, like, a few weeks, thinking... I'm quite embarrassed myself at the moment. Like, lads right. ain't giving me a hard time at all, but I'm like, in myself, I'm thinking, this is probably the worst I've ever played. Like, I was thinking that because when I looked at it, I thought, my last game was April. <clears throat> I've not trained or done any fitness work. I've, I've not had a pre season in me. I've just gone straight into football. So I've had four months of not doing anything in myself. And that's the first time I've really done that. Yeah. So I'm not really physically fit. Like, I've gone down, obviously, non not that the standard really bothered me, but I thought, if I go in now, I'm going to be fine. Do you know what I mean? My, my ability and, do you know what I mean? I'll be, I'll be fine. Do you know what I mean? Physically, I'm fine. But, like, fitness-wise, stuff like that. But it was just more mentally. So, I phoned up Mark, and I was like, look. I said, Mark, you got a minute? It was like, yeah. I said, can I be honest with you? It's said, yeah. I went, I must apologise for my performances. He went, right. I said, I said, look, I'm man enough to say, and I said this to you when I signed the contract, that if it's not working out or... It's not, it's not going great, we'll just walk away. I'm always, I'm old fashioned. You shake in people's hands and say, Do you know what? Yeah, thank you for your time. I said, Look, I won't take your money anymore. Do you know what I mean? You don't need to pay me up, I'll just walk away if it's not working out for whatever reason because I don't think it's fair because you're non league club. Do you know what I mean? You pay me X amount of money. If it's not working out, we'll just go. I won't, I won't, I won't drag it out. Yeah, uh, I said, But I must apologize. First of all, I want to apologize. I said, Like, I, I said, He said, Okay, he said, Why do you think I said, Like, I'll be honest with you, I said, Like, Obviously, I've left the pro game. So, the first time coming to non-league football, so it's an eye-opener. So, secondly, we train a Tuesday, Thursday night. So, I've never trained Tuesday, Thursday night in my life. Yeah. So, it's hard to, <clears throat> to get yourself motivated, do you know what I mean, to train on a Tuesday night. And yeah. to be honest, the, tra the training, what we do is totally different to pro game as well. So, it's different. I said, I'm travelling to these, these shitty little stadiums as well. Um, I'm, play I'm playing against, I'm playing against, I'm not disrespect, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, no. Some of them, some, some, listen, some of them are nice. But then you, compared to what I'm used to, like sort of thing, I said, like, yeah. you got, um, I said, you got some players, not in our team, so you got, you're playing up against players who are, I said, I can't even believe they even get paid to play football. Yeah. I said, they, they, they're, they're awful or they're big time or what they're doing. I said, like, I said, like, I'm just, I said, like, my problem is, right, mentally, I'm not here and I haven't been for the last three months. And I said, physically, obviously, I'm trying to get fit anyway. And it takes me a while. I said, but I said, Mark, I know it's mind over matter, right? And I said, I, I promise you, right? I said, I know you pay me good money as well. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, you haven't, I, I haven't given you what you've been paying me. I yeah. said, so, but from now on, I promise you, you'll get a different Paul Hayes. And yeah. you'll be, uh, you're, that's exactly what you're going to get. And he went, okay, then Paul, well, let's see, let, let's see how it goes. I said, no, I'm, I'm telling you now, right? I said, whenever I say I'm going to do something, I'm, I'm, I'll do it. Yeah. Like, I'm not messing around sort of thing. So I put down the phone and then from November right away to the end of the season, I was just, I was just a different kettle of fish. Yeah. I was, I was motivated. I got my, my enjoyment back. I got mingled in with the lads. I was bantering the, the other opposition. Like, you know, when they get, I remember one lad. So we, we played Tilbury at home and his name's called Louis. I think he, I've never heard of him before in my life. Yeah. And he, um, it, one of the lads said to me, oh, that's Louis so-and-so. And uh, this is when he told me afterwards. So I'm like, he, he started, he, he playing against Leon Bennett, the, the, the left, the right back, sorry. He's only 16 at the time, 17. He's only a first year scholar, right, sort of thing. And Liam was one of our better players at the time. So he's worthy and sort of thing. He's going, ah, oh, how good I am. And then he'd done something really good. I said, hang on a minute. I said, who are you? And he went, uh, he went, come on, mate, just Google me. And I went, right, that's what he said to me on the pitch. <laughs> and then his mate, chirped, his, his mate chirped in, going, how old are you? I said, well, I said, let me stop you there. I said, Google you. I said, what's your name? He's going, you don't even know my name. He said, oh, and his mate kept saying, how old are you? I said, listen, mate. I said, how old I am? I said, M imagine being on the same pitch as me. I said, like, that's, that's so embarrassing that you are. I said, you play for Tilbury, mate. Why are you having yourself? <laughs> I said, we're all, all non-league players. How can you have yourself? Yeah. And then he started saying, I'm on more than you. And I oh, went, days. Oh. Yeah, I went, what? And he went, I'm on more than you. And he said, oh, you crap. I said, I said, look, I said, let me hold you there. I said, I'll bet you my mortgage I'm on money. I said, if you want to talk about money, I said, we'll go in there. We'll get both our wage slips and we'll show each other. <laughs> right? 
I said, I said, I'm not, I said, I'm not in this game to, like, to talk about to you about money. He started yeah. going, and then he started going, I'm a millionaire. He said, like, I, um, I earn 600 grand up London. And I went, what? He said, I said, I said, so why the hell are you playing for Tilbury if you're a millionaire? Yeah. I said, I said, ain't that a bit embarrassing? Like, I said, like, just, just have a day off. <coughs> and then he started, started giving it loads. <coughs> and then he started, like, saying, like, I'm on 400 quid a week. I'm on 400 quid a week. I said, listen, mate. Get out of my face. I said, don't even talk to me. I said, like, you just, just talk about money all the time. I said, like, you're playing against a 16-year-old lad and you're having yourself. Yeah. I said, you're playing step five at 27 years of age. Like, you're not, can't be that good. <laughs> and, do you know what I mean? But, like, they're the sort of characters I have. And then I, I, I play against someone at uh, Great Wakening. And, uh, like, um, a black lad. And he's going, um, he started kissing his teeth and he started saying, uh, oh, these, these lads are shit, these lads are shit. And I said, mate, I said, look, calm yourself down. I said, we're all as good as each other. Like, we've all playing at the same level. We're here for a reason. And it, yeah. And then he just kept saying to me, like, you don't know me. You don't know where I'm from. I said, listen, it doesn't, we're all from different places. Don't say that. I said, look, we're here to play football. I said, why are you battering your team? He went, you're shit. You're rubbish. You're shit. I said, listen, mate. I said, I'm, I'm, I said look, I'm 42 years of age, but you still can't get past me. <laughs> and, it, and it's like... And it was just like, I was just thinking, what are these, what are these different people on? <clears throat> Why are they, <clears throat> what really make go through the head to think that they, I, I was playing against pros and they, they you know what I mean? I play, who did I play? I play against company, play against, you know what I mean? Like big players. They were so grand and humble. Do you know what I mean? Shaking your hands. I played against Tottenham, um, the centre half. They're just shaking your hands off and saying like, that was a good game. Thanks ever so much. And I'm, yeah. and I'm, and I'm playing against people. I'm thinking, what is wrong with these people? Why are they having themselves so much? And it was just, it was just them characters. What, what Gareth, um, Alexander and <coughs> Danny Kebble said to me about these characters. And like, to be fair, like say, I got myself up and motivated and I just thought, you know what? I'm having this now. Then let's, let's get involved. And like, if people are having themselves, let's bring them down a peg or two because at the end of the day, do you know what I mean? We're all on the same pitch. We're all just, basically, we're all just shit as each other. No one's betting each other. Like, just, let's just have a good crack. So yeah. like, the, to be fair, the sub players, because the majority of the young stuff, like, they looked at me and they thought, Oh, that's so funny. I was just having people on toast and just messing around with them and having that. And then I was just got in the swing of things of the non-league sort of thing. And like I said, because the fans are close to you, they start banning you a little bit more. And, I, you know, yeah. I'll go over and, like, you know, I'll go and get my arm around them. I smile with them, wink at them. And it's just like that little bit of thing where it's a little bit close. And it's like, there's no arm in it. Do you know what I mean? So I, I bought into it. And like you said, I said, like when I said to Mark, I said, I think when I didn't, see, I didn't see, I said to him, I think I needed a little bit of time to adjust what I was doing. Yeah, and um, and that's why I think I was so bad, and it was I was struggling mentally because it was all new to me. But then once I knew the sort of stadiums I was going to, the players I was up against, the trainings on the on the Tuesday Thursday nights, and getting home at eleven o'clock at night after training and things like that, it's just I just bought into it, and I just thought, you know what, this is this I ain't got a problem with this because I've always I've always said since day one, you're only as good as the change room that you're in or the or the or the grass that you're playing on. So I never once ever thought that I was better than someone. I mean, if I was at Sudbury, I never thought that I'm. I'm betting the Sudbury. I'm betting it's like you're only as good as your, the club that offers you the contract. Yeah. So I, I, I just I just jumped on board after that, and obviously I've I done well. And I, like I said, I really really enjoyed myself. Good people. Good man. Good man. One question on the uh, on the on the rest of your career, and then I just want to very briefly because I know we've been at this for quite a while. and talk about your yeah, sure. as an agent. No, you're fine, mate. You're fine. Um, you you met you retired in June yeah. 19, and then came back. I was talking to Jamie Curriton the other day and he said, as long as I'm enjoying football, I'm going to keep going for as long as I possibly can. Do you, uh, how, how, how much longer do you think that you will be able to, are you, are you still enjoying it? Do you still get the buzz of coming to playing football? What's your kind of situation at the moment? Yeah, well, obviously mine was a little bit different. I, I, I retired because I had an opportunity going to be in a football agent and I thought, well, do you know I mean, I had another year left at Sudbury, which I could have done, but I thought, well, after that year, what if I badly get injured or, <coughs> What, where do I go from there sort of thing am I, I'm, am I still trying to chase this dream sort of thing so I thought agency because I can't really get into management at this moment in time right. agency is probably my next route that I thought you know what with my experience that I've said on this I can help out individual players because I can turn around and say I know what it's like being isolated I know what it's like being injured I know what it's like moving away from your family I know what it's like getting promoted or relegated or all these scenarios so I can relate to players on a personal level so I thought that interests me where I can do agency for the next 35 years, but I might play football for two more years. So yeah. I got the chance to go and <coughs> sorry, but agency with this company. And, uh, and it just, it, my reputation was a little bit on the line because they wanted me to do things. I wasn't getting paid properly with them. They were using me. 
And it just, it, I just after each month, I was thinking, do you know what? This ain't for me. I can't, I can't work for this company. Like I'm, I'm, I'm literally gonna pull my hair out, and I'm having arguments. And it was only lasted with them for the six months, I think it was. So right. I retired because I went into to that when I could have played. So then I left there, and I only left there obviously last November. So it was a case of right, what I haven't got a job, I haven't got an income. I need to do something now. So it was a case of right maybe the only thing I can do, which I've done for the last 18 years of my life, 20 years of my life, that go back and play football. But because yeah. I, I retired, I ain't played football since April again. And now we're talking December. That's like, like I say, seven, eight months. I haven't even kicked a ball. I ain't done no exercise, no, no nothing. So yeah. like I say, I was just sort of scratching around trying to find a club that could pay a little bit of money and stuff and just trying to find my feet. And uh, I wasn't fit, but um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think, I think like <clears throat> I've got through till now, like just kicking the ball around I've set up a little one-on-one coaching course, one-on-one session for kids now as well, which is going to get my business going uh, purely to work on my experience, like the experience I've had, I can help out boys. So, but um, obviously with everything that's gone on with the world and, and things yeah. that have gone on, it's made me really think about, right, what's your next step, Paul? What are you going to do? Because I'm not going to be, I could be an agent. I'm still licensed to be an agent. And I can, like I say, I, I, like I say, one of my transfers, obviously took one of the Sudbury lads, um, uh, Tyler French. I took him to Charlton and, and I took him to Charlton. I took him to Barnsley on trial because uh, I know both the clubs, obviously. Um, done really well. And then he went to Bradford on a, on a three-day trial. Yeah, yeah. And they liked him and, 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 and they bought him. Uh, and he got himself a two-year deal. So that was one of my moves because I went to Sudbury. I didn't know Tyra at all. I heard that he's been at clubs on trial at Ipswich and, and Leicester and things like that. And yeah. this, other, this non-league agent was throwing him all over the place. And I said, listen, Tyler. Stick with me and I'll look after you. I've got enough contacts. I know enough people. I've got good reputation. I will get you a club. Yeah, if, yeah. You, if you've got, I've seen, I've seen you. You're six foot three. You're rapid. You're good on the ball. You're a defender, centre half. You'll get a club. Yeah, like yeah. between us, we're, so I took Tyler under my wing, a young lad who's only 20 at the time, and obviously 20 last season. And um, went out to Bradford, done really well, and got himself a two year deal. And uh, like I said, one thing, I've just obviously just got Liam Bennett as well to Cambridge. The right back we were talking about about the the uh, the right back who's, who's who he's going to be he's going to be good he's going to be playing in the first team at, at Cambridge. I kid you not. Next two years he'll be playing first team football there. Very good. Amazing. Best non league player. Best non league player I've played with. I've played with Singh. Really? And, um, yeah. Re- yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. He he reminds me exactly like Chris Solly at Charlton. Yeah. Um, I played with Solly when he was twenty when he came into the first team at Charlton and I thought this guy's good. He's five foot nothing. Same as as Liam. Very humble, very quiet, just like Liam. But he just does all the talking on the field. One on ones, you don't get past him. Very quick and, and, and agile, uh, very comfortable on the ball. He sticks his foot in if he needs to. Um, and he's, he's so, he's just up and down. He, he, Liam, Liam's going to go on and, and do well. And I think Tyler will as well. So, um, like I say, I was, I was pleased that I'd done them with my deals. And I come away from my agency. So I'll still look after them on a personal level, but <laughs> I'm not working for a, for a company and stuff. Um, so, like I say, I just, a lot of time to deflect. I thought, do you know what? It might be best. I, I, I left football out of my own course, not because uh, the clubs didn't want me. So, yeah. uh, maybe not pro level, I might not be able to get to because I've been two years now and that sort of thing. But I still think I could probably play at a conference south to a conference side. Do you know what I mean? Sudbury come across to me. It wasn't a case that I had to go down to that level and with all due respect sort of thing. Yeah, Mark. Mark come to me, and that's only that's why I went to Sudbury in, in, yeah. in step five. But like I said they could have been in step seven. They could have been in step three. It didn't bother me. It was just a case that they wanted to sign me, and we all sorted it. So I obviously it was fine. So I know I could still play at a, a reasonable level. So I just need to get myself. The biggest thing I need to do is get myself fit because I've I've not had a pre season. I've had one pre season in five years. So I need to get myself fit. So um, the case is like you say, got a lot of time now to get myself fit. I know now what. I, I want so, like I said, I, I want to get back and, and, and play football. Or the other option is apply for manager's job, which I have done. So Amazing. we'll have to wait and see what happens. Amazing. Well, Paul, I, I wish you all the best of luck for the next move, whatever, whatever it may be. If it's playing, then fantastic. Um, you know, hopefully you can get that move. If not, management, I can, I can see you being a very honest and open manager. Um, and I think anyone would would love to have. To have you at that club, so I said, I, whatever, whatever move you decide to do, I wish you all the best. I'm going to keep a close eye on it because um, I've thoroughly enjoyed this chat, um, and I know that everyone who's been listening to this will find some of the, com- the conversations have been absolutely amazing. So I really appreciate the time. Um, no worries tonight, Paul. Um, but yeah, if you guys have enjoyed it, 
make sure you hit the thumbs up, uh, leave a comment on, you know, on your best parts of the podcast. Um, you know, any, any anything, uh, it's just been absolutely amazing. Really, really appreciate your time, Paul. Thank you very much for coming. Nah, listen, no, no worries at all. Like I say, we're going through a, a terrible time at this moment. And like I say, you, you'll be surprised. Like you say, you'll be able to talk to, to so many more people now because as you know, not many people are doing too much. So it's the best thing. Like I say, it's, uh, thanks for your time, James. And um, it's been brilliant. And hopefully, like I say, people want to listen to it and, and, and ask questions and more than welcome. And listen, if, if there's any clubs or out there that want to take me, that's fine. We'll, uh, you maybe might be able to help me get a move, James. You never know. Yeah, well, there you go. I can be your agent. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Happy days. Well, you get, you get 5%. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold you to that. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. As I said, hit the subscribe. No Adios.